This project is presented by Shifai Lamath and Shantanu Singh and the name of our project is Li-Fi Technology. In conventional communication technology, we use light or electromagnetic wave for communication. But here in Li-Fi, light fidelity, we are using light to transmit data. The objective of making this project was to get our hands on this technology. This technology has been under research for several years and few commercial devices are also available based on this technology in the market. However, it still haven't got that much of attention. So we made a hardware project which gives much more insert of the technology rather than in simulation. And hardware also gives much more opportunity to learn. We did this project by ourselves and successfully tested the concept of Li-Fi technology. We also wanted to implement this technology in our day-to-day -day life. In this slide, you will see all the components we have used. We have used two Arduino boards, one is Uno and the other one is Nano. We have used a solar panel which you will see further in our project and we have laser light, IR LEDs, photo detectors and photodiodes which will be used to detect and transmit light and as of the software we are using Arduino ID for coding this Arduino boards. In this circuit diagram you can see Arduino Nano board used as the transmitter. It is using an IR LED and on the other hand we can see the Arduino Uno used as a receiver. So here we can see the IR receiver. This circuit diagram will be used for both demo and testing of our project. Now coming on to testing, our first objective was to select an optimal transmitter as well as a receiver. So we had IR LED and laser light as an option for our transmitter and for receiver we had LDR and photodiode. We tried different combinations with our circuit like LED with LDR and LED with IR and many other combinations amongst which we found IR LED with photodiode the most optimal since IR and photodiode showed maximum response to the input signal. For testing purposes, we wanted to have the transmitter and receiver with highest response. We wanted the fall time and rise time of the pulse to be as small as possible. Unfortunately, we did not have access to an oscilloscope, so we were not able to check the response time of these components. So we tried to use the serial monitor on an Arduino. We connected those components onto the Arduino as per our circuit and plotted those graphs onto the Arduino serial monitor. According to the graph, we found out IR receiver had the least rise and fall period and it was much more responsive than counterparts which were LDR and photodiodes. The working principle of our project is quite simple. Whenever there is light or the light is on, it is binary 1 or whenever the light is off, it is binary 0. So this data is encoded and decoded to transmit data and convert the received data into characters. So now talking about the protocol, initially we won't be sending any data. So it will be a constant low and then a single, whenever we want to transmit a data, a single high bit will be sent from the transmitter. And this will be indicated as a start bit for the message. And then that receiver will wait for 1.5 times the time period and it will then consecutively receive all the bits as a message. So eight consecutive bits will be counted as a character and whenever we receive a null bit that is all the eight characters are zero, the, mess the reception of the bytes will be stopped and uh, the message will be concluded. Okay, so now we can see the transmitter code on our left and the receiver code on our right. So let's just quickly go through the code. So first of all, we have defined the LED pin that is the IR transmitter pin as 12 and uh, we are also defining the period. The period here is the uh, period uh, for every pulse, uh, whether it is low or high. And uh, coming to the uh, function itself, we have the setup function. It is just for in initializing the serial monitor and also printing the. So now we have the transmitter code on our left and the receiver code on our right. So inside the code, we can see that we have defined an LED pin that will be our IR transmitter LED and it is defined as digital pin 12 and we have also the period that is the time period of uh, every pulse it is defined as 15 milliseconds and continuing with it okay it cannot be 15 okay so now we have our transmitter code on the left and the receiver code on the right so in this code we can see that we have defined our LED pin as 12 and uh, that will be our transmitter LED and the period is 50. This period is the time period of uh, every pulse that is 1 or 0. And inside the function of the setup we can see that we are just in initializing the serial monitor and uh, we are also printing some messages. 
here you can see we are writing the LED pin low that is turning off the LED so that it will indicate that there is no transmission of message and inside the loop we can see that we are uh, searching for serial uh, string so whenever we enter any kind of uh, string into the serial monitor and uh, we press enter the string will be detected here and it will be saved into a variable named as INP and then uh, uh, the new line character which will be at the end of the line will be removed and we will uh, call this send message function so inside the send message function we can see that we are uh, looping through each and every character of the string and uh, we are calling this send byte function so this send byte function uh, does some bit manipulation to extract each and every bit out of it and all these bits are uh, then transmitted using the IR transmitter that is if the bit is 1 then it is uh, uh, then the LED pin is uh, lighting up or if it is 0 then the LED pin is turned off so you can see if we are also delaying for the period uh, and then we are returning to our send message function so after all the messages uh, all the characters have been sent we are just uh, digital writing the LED pin to low that is we are sending a null character and it will also indicate that the message have been ended and finally we are printing done now we can take a look at the receiver's code here we are uh, uh, just initializing the serial monitor again and then uh, we can see inside the loop we are having two uh, variables that is current state and the previous state so current state is getting its value from get LDR function so get LDR function is taking the input from analog read uh, from analog pin 0 so analog pin 0 is uh, having the photodiode and uh, when, whenever the photodiode's voltage is greater than the threshold voltage it will return uh, false or if it is less than voltage threshold voltage then it will uh, return true so we are having this function and if we are checking for the if condition uh, if the current state is 1 and the previous state was 0 that is we have detected a rising edge then we will enter this segment of code and we will write the digital pin uh, LED pin high this uh, LED pin is just for indicating that the green LED that the transmission of bits have been started and we will uh, delay for 1.5 into period and we will get into a loop and inside the loop we can see we are calling the get byte function the get byte function just uh, loops for eight eight times and it gets each and every character so it is again getting the value from LDR and if it is one or zero accordingly it is uh, storing into our character so we will delaying for period after transmission of each bit and then finally we are just uh, storing the character into our uh, variable and then we are returning so here if we have re uh, if the character is a null character then we can see that the transmission of bit have been ended and we can just print out the message and if it is not null so we can just uh, uh, update our message string and uh, increment it with the character received and finally after we have we uh, we have received all the characters we can come out of the loop and just uh, print the message onto the screen and also you can see for the transmitter uh, we are having our Arduino Nano connected here with the USB 0 port and uh, uh, on the other hand for the receiver we have Arduino Uno board connected with the, you can see the serial port uh, ACM0 now we can quickly upload both of these codes onto our Arduino boards and let us just start with the serial monitor <coughs> so you can see hello from transmitter 1 and uh, hello from receiver 2 so we can start by sending some message like hello so here you can see the bits are being transmitted uh, bits are being transmitted and the each character is uh, transmitting bit by bit so finally we have received the hello function here and we can also type something like uh, hi so yeah so the transmission is happening there and the green LED is indicating whenever uh, the bits are being transmitted So we are using the same uh, Atmega 328P microcontroller on both the Arduino boards and the clock frequencies are also the same. But uh, running some certain commands like the serial commands or executing the program takes different time on both the Arduino boards. So whenever I run these programs it takes different time for both the Arduino boards and this can be observed in our uh, and this induces an error into the transmission of bits. So for example now you can see that uh, time period is 50, uh, 50 milliseconds. And now if I transmit a 10 byte data, so you can see the data is being transmitted. And now if we compare the data, so you can see that after like uh, uh, till the 8th bit, 8th byte, the data is transmitting perfectly. But after that, you can see that uh, it should be receiving uh, a 9 here, but it is receiving 8. That is because the last bit is not getting received. So it has skipped 1 and uh, skipped 1 and then continue receiving the bits from 0. So the receiver is missing some bits. 
and this happens uh, with the uh, time period uh, lesser time periods and if i decrease the time period this will happen more often so you can say only 8 bits are transferring perfectly and then there is a bit missing and then again for uh, the next 8 bytes we are receiving perfectly fine data so if i uh, reduce the period of the pulse so for example if i just uh, uh, update it to 15 so now it is the 15 millisecond pulse and now if i try to uh, send the same data so here I will be transmitting the 10 byte data. So the transmission is much faster, but as you can see, only four bytes are getting transmitted uh, perfectly. And after that we are having an error. So the receiver is missing a bit after the four bytes. And as we decrease the, uh, decrease the period, the number of bytes getting transmitted uh, correctly are reducing. And if we increase the time period, the transmission will get, uh, uh, will get slower, but also uh, the interval after which we have an error bit increases. So this is happening due to certain uh, certain unsynchronization between the clocks. So since we have the same synchronized clock in the beginning, but the clock intervals are different for both the Arduino boards. After some times, the receiver is missing a byte. This induces an error. So there are uh, many ways to solve this problem. But what we are doing, uh, but what we are doing in our project is we are detecting uh, after how many number of bits or how many bytes we are receiving an error bit. So after, so for for example, if we are receiving after three, uh, three bits, we are receiving an error bit. We we can just send a null collector after three bits so that uh, the clocks will be synchronized again. So we will be sending data from this to this interval, and then we will send a null character so that uh, the receiver will be again in synchronized with the transmitter. And then we are again sending three bits, and then this uh, loop continues till we have received all the data. And one more thing is that uh, earlier what we were doing is in the receiver you can see uh, we are ending ending our message whenever we receive a null character. But now using the, uh, the updated code, now we will be ending the message when we will receive a new line character. So now let us now just update the code on both the Arduino boards. So as you can see the transmitter message on the left side is uh, uh, almost same as the code we have earlier, but there is only a few, uh, only a slight difference that uh, whenever there is a, uh, when we, whenever we across an error bit, that is the bit after uh, every third bit, there is after every third byte, uh, we are having an error bit. So after every third byte, we are just waiting. And this waiting time is just to send a null character. So we are uh, waiting for period into 10 and we are setting the LED pin to low. That means that we are sending a null character. And then we are again writing the LED pin to high. That means that uh, we are uh, sending a starting bit. That means that we are again transmitting the message. And in the receiver, you can see. So now uh, it is no longer uh, ending whenever we get a message as null. So whenever we get a message as null, it will be treated as a, as a break that yeah, we are just synchronizing the clock and we, will, we won't print anything. But if we receive a new line character, now we can say that yeah, the message has been received, we can print the message and I also printed some other things as well. And uh, the rest of the code is same as it was earlier. So now let us just upload the uh, updated code here. <coughs> So we can see from transmitter to and receiver to we are having uh, yeah. So now I can transmit the uh, 10 bytes. Okay, so you can see after every three bytes, we are having a null character just for the synchronization of the clock. And after that, the uh, data starts again, the uh, receiving of data starts again. And you can see the message is perfectly fine. And there is no error into the message. So we can also send a large message. For example, let me just uh, send a demo message here so it is a long string it will take uh, some time yeah so now the message have been received and you can see that uh, the message does not contain any kind of error and you can see 1424 bits have been transferred and uh, the time taken is uh, 19 milliseconds that is 19 seconds and this is the speed so one thing we have to keep in mind is that the components and the microcontrollers we are using are not made for such high response time uh, applications so for uh, communicating with higher response time we need much better rece uh, receptors and uh, transmitters 
so this is the circuit diagram for music streaming we have a 3.5 mm jack connected to our mobile phone playing music and we also have a laser light driven by a 5 volt power supply the analog output coming from the headphone jack will modulate the laser light which will be received by a solar panel the solar panel is connected to a stereo speaker using an aux cable thus it will play music according to the received signal however there is a lot of noise into the output because of the visible light in our room in order to reduce the noise we can either turn the lights off or we can cover up the area of solar panel which is not being penetrated by the laser The Li-Fi technology has a great potential to be applicable in our daily lives but it requires high receivers and transmitters. It is also in questionable use when no data loss is tolerable, for example in transfer of files. However, it can be applicable in broadcasting audio and video streaming where multiple devices can receive audio and video data, for example in a stadium. To compete with Wi-Fi or other kind of technologies, it needs more research and experimentation.